You have a, a stellar career uh, in the world of producing, in the field of producing. You've just said uh, it's not an easy job to have in, in the world of filmmaking. Um, I guess a lot of people, you know, they want to be directors and they want to be actors and whatnot. What made you choose to be a producer? That's a good question. I came up through the physical production side. You know, when I started out after film school, I ran some movies and um, I enjoyed putting the whole uh, package together and I enjoyed the development process and packaging, marketing distribution. So I think producing gives you a handle on, on, the, on the whole picture. And I wasn't talented enough to be a director. So here's where I am. And what are some of those challenges that you face as a producer and, and how do you keep going? Like, how, were there moments you're like, this is just too those, challenging? Yeah, those moments happen every day. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's a very, very challenging job. I think that the secret to producing is um, choo choosing the material. It's all about like access to material, choosing material that you like and becoming passionate about that material and sticking with it and helping, believing in that story that you want to tell and helping pull the package together, convincing a director to come on, convincing the yeah. actors and then convincing someone to give you the money and then ultimately to distribute the project. So it, there's a lot of steps along the way, there's a lot of challenges, but everything starts out with the material. And then obviously I have to follow up with the question, how do you find good material? Well, I mean, there's a whole variety of ways. Obviously, you know, you can cook something up out of your own head. Um, you can read um, newspaper, magazine articles, be inspired by real life, uh, literature. You know, there is just an infinite amount of um, ways that you can find material. And for us uh, at Anonymous Content, which is my company, yep. we have a management division. We have 25 talent managers that are very smart, coming up with ideas all the time. And we represent about 600 clients writers, directors, actors, and actresses. So we have a lot of access to uh, very smart people with ideas. And, um, and that's really where the material comes from. Now there's a lot of people probably watching at home and, and, and out there in this <coughs> world, no matter if they're in LA or in, or in Switzerland, they, they, they would love to be in the film industry. Uh, and probably some of them not even sure you know, how to get there, what to do. What, what, what would you say, like, what are the character traits you need to be a good producer? Or, or maybe what are the ones where you say, hey, you know what, maybe you shouldn't be a producer because you don't have what it takes? I, I think that the first part of the question is you need an enormous amount of tenacity and stick to it. And I don't think that you can say you don't have what it takes. It's, I think you just have to hang in there. Okay. You know, it's really, really a tough job. And, um, you know, I just made this movie, The Revenant. What I've been developing it for 10 years. So it you know, you have to stick to it. If you don't have that trait, don't go into that business. Okay. And you also have to be pretty thick skinned because you suffer a lot of rejection. Right. You know, you have projects that you believe in that are very difficult to get made and people reject it, reject it, reject it. And ultimately you just need one person to say yes. And then they say yes and you, your dreams come true. Right. What about the direction with, 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 with the projects in your company, uh, Anonymous Content, as you mentioned? Where are you guys going? Is there a specific sort of direction you headed? Or how do you, how do you pick your projects? Well, I think it's just stories that we're passionate about. Uh, I don't think that there's, there's a direction in the sense of we, uh, up until about three or four years ago, we mostly concentrated on motion picture. Now we have a big concentration on television mm -hmm. because I think with the proliferation of high quality television and channels coming up and in the drama space, movies are very difficult to get made in the drama space. And I think there's been a big migration of that talent into the television business. So we, we're, we're very focused on that business. I guess I could ask you that question, is, it, is there such thing as preference, uh, TV versus a uh, feature, like in terms of producing, do you prefer one or the other? No, yeah. I, I enjoy both. And I think that really it's about trying to figure out what's best suited for the material. Right. I mean, there's, I'm developing a, a project with Paramount where our TV deal is called The Alienist, which is a big book, 700 page book that they've been trying to make into a movie for the last 20 years and now we're going to make it into 10 hours of television. And I think that that particular book is more suited for 10 hours than it is for two hours. Okay. So I think that sometimes the material dictates what, what it is, and sometimes the economics dictate it. You know, Sometimes things are just too difficult to do one way or the other, and they just kind of blend themselves. But we're spending a lot more time discussing when we find a piece of material that we're passionate about, we spend a lot more time discussing whether we think it's more suitable for motion picture or television. Mm. Before, we would, if it wasn't suitable for motion picture, we didn't, didn't get involved. Mm. But now there's an, another option. Mm. That's just one of the big things that, that happened in terms of change in the last 10 or, or so years. Uh, what 
how else did the has the has the industry changed since you have stepped onto the scene? Well, it's changed dramatically. I mean, you know, when I first got into the business in the uh, early '80s, it was uh, the home video boom was on, mm. and there was a big prolifer proliferation of home video, and a lot of uh, movies were financed through home video. Now, home video is much less important, and there's VOD and all these different things. Mm -hmm. So, there's been a tremendous transact trans. Um, transfer of that and also international in the 80s was not as important then it became very important uh -huh. and now it's kind of a swing back to domestic and some of the international has become really tough uh -huh. uh, you know Germany is a tougher market now than it used to be in terms of television uh, TV sales backing up theatrical and Japan and um, Spain you know after the economic crisis mm. things really shifted what about China well I mean you know I haven't had a movie that's been wide released in China yet, but obviously it's a massive market and it's opening up and you look at um, Mission Impossible and mm. all, all, all these big type of movies. I think the type of movies that I make probably are not as suitable for the Chinese market as the big action movies. Okay. Uh, looking back uh, at your career, what are some of the lessons that you learned along the way? Is there like, is there like a particular maybe a mistake that you made that you said, hey, you know, I learned so much from it? Oh, yeah. I mean, you, you know, you make so many mistakes every day. I think that, mm. you know, I think the biggest mistake that I've made is not being um, tough enough on some material on the script, you know, really not rushing into production and, and actually um, spending the extra time in development. I okay. Think that that's, that's a big one. But, you know, when you're making 100 decisions a day, you make a lot of wrong decisions. So you're making mistakes all the time and you try not to make the same mistake over and over again. Right. But, you know, it's inevitable that you're going to make a lot of decisions that you wish you could, you know, rethink. After, uh, you know, so many, so many successful projects in life, do you still get nervous? What makes you nervous? No, I mean, no one wants to fail. You yeah. know, when I go into a screening for the first time of a movie or a television series, I get the butterflies. Right. You know, and nice. sometimes the first day of shooting, I'm nervous that night before. So, yeah. I, you know, you still have that energy and that adrenaline. And it's, you know, the thing with these projects are no one sets out to fail. No one sets out right. to make a bad movie or a bad TV show. But sometimes they don't live up to the expectation. So there's still the thrill when you get one that is really working. You know, it's a lot of excitement and satisfaction. Is the saying true in Hollywood? You're only as good as your last movie. Yeah, I mean, uh, no, but but I think that there's a cumulative thing. I mean, no one, no one that makes a lot of content, uh, whether it's movies or television, succeeds all the time. Mm. So you're going to have failures, and you learn more from the failures probably right. than from the successes. But really, the thing is, you, you know, you just dust yourself up, off and get back and and go again, and you know. Because of our company, we have multiple projects going all the time. So we have success and failure in the same week. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. just like, well, that succeeded, yeah. that failed. Yeah. And, you know, and you just got to keep going. And you right. got to, you try to learn from the mistakes. Yeah. Well, in order to win awards, you got to have success, but probably also failures from, from, them you, from those you learn, as we just discussed. You are receiving the Career Achievement Award here at the Zurich Film Festival. What does that mean to you? Oh, it's a, just a great honor. I mean, I, I'm hoping that it doesn't mean that I'm, my career is over. <laughs> <laughs> you no, know, just a, you know, another of those chapters. No, I but guess. it's a real honor. I mean, I was, when they called and asked me if, I, you know, told me that I was getting the award, I was, I was so... Um, kind of gratified and you know and I think that it's also uh, I'm accepting it uh, on behalf of all the people at Anonymous also yeah, it's yeah, like I'm course. not doing this myself yeah like I have a lot of really smart colleagues that have been really helpful and they also keeping me young and relevant you know and mm. and I can mentor them and sometimes they mentor me mm. so it's it's really been good and we've built up this company over the last 15 years and it's been very satisfying and you know and the awards just great um, first time at the Zurich Film Festival. How has the f festival been for you so far? Well, I just got here yesterday, okay. but it really, you know, it's a beautiful city. The hotel's mm -hmm. amazing. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, I was on a panel and watched a couple of panels this morning, which were very, very interesting. So, uh, you know, that part of it is great. And I hope I get to see a couple of films. Well, one of the films that uh, is, is being shown here at the festival is Spotlight. Um, beautiful film, great film. Gripping film, uh, watch a trailer, I'm, I'm dying to watch it. Uh, tell us more about it, um, how did that project come together? There, it was originally initiated by um, two colleagues of ours, um, Brian and Nicole, they are producers, they brought us, it was a series of articles that was published that we bought yeah. and then we um, hired um, Tom McCarthy to direct it and he co-wrote it with Josh Singer, who's a client of our management company. and. Um, 
the movie came together. It was a very difficult movie to get made. Mm. It's a tricky subject matter. Yeah. That you know, Catholic Church. It's basically the story of the Boston Globe newspaper mm -hmm. doing an expose about the Catholic Church covering up the pedophile scandal in 2001. And um, I'm really pleased with the movie. I'm really proud of it. Uh, Tom did a phenomenal job. It's got a great cast, and it's that type of drama is a very small bullseye. You have to make a great movie, otherwise people will just dismiss it. And he really he got it right. Mm. So I'm really happy with the movie. And I think it's about a lot of different things. It's about why. It's about first of all, I think about um, investigative journalism, which is very important. Is really suffering because mm -hmm. of the uh, internet. And it's also about why the community didn't, how it was possible to cover up such a big story. And there were so many people that turned a blind eye to it because it's such an unpleasant subject. Mm. And, um, you know, and, and it's, it's an international problem. It's not just a problem in Boston. You know, it's a worldwide problem. And I think people have to, uh, you know, any kind of child abuse is, it, it, just, it just poisons society. Mm. Based on a true story, I would assume are always a bit, you know, delicate to produce. I guess it's 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 putting on a scale how much of it you want it to be real and how much of it you want it to be sort of fictional. In this case, with such a delicate topic, I would assume you gotta be closer to reality. Very or close. Not no, yeah? very very close. In okay. fact, the um, the main characters in the movie are the journalists, mm. and in each of the journalists. Um, it's uh, Michael Keaton, Mark Ruffalo, uh, Rachel McAdams, Liev Schreiber, Stanley Tucci, John Slattery, and each of those actors was very close and in touch with the person that they were playing. And oftentimes the journalists were on the set and they vetted the script all the way along. I mean, it's very, very close to the truth. Obviously, we had to com uh, compact certain aspects of the story because we didn't want to make, you know, it's a two-hour movie, mm. but um, it's very close to the truth. Mm. Another topic that is, uh, I think, uh, very current is uh, cybercrime yeah. and the world of hackers, which uh, is uh, the, the theme of Mr. Robot, one of your TV series. Tell us more about that. It's a, um, Sam Ishmael, who's a client of ours, came, and uh, my colleague Ch Chad Hamilton, who I produced it with, he came to us and told us the story, and we hired him to write the script, and then we packaged it and went out and sold it, and we did it at USA. Mm -hmm. And it is a very topical show, and I think it's not only topical from a hacker's point of view, but it's, it deals a lot with um, income inequality and, and the world that we live in, and mm -hmm. it's, it's a very political show and very subversive, and I was surprised that you know it's getting as much attention as it is so that's very gratifying um <clears throat> the world becoming so computerized and and you know technologically advanced or whatever you want to call it like are you pri as, a, as a private person as, as steve you are, are you afraid of 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 uh hackers or of your own not really security? i mean look obviously i don't want to be hacked but mm -hmm. um i'm not a very technological person okay. you know I mean I've got my phone and my mm. email and mm. you know I watch Netflix but mm. I'm not like on the leading edge of it but I mean you know I have my credit card hacked all the time like mm. everybody else mm. and you kind of deal with it and you know it, it, obviously there's a real fear of a big cyber attack that w could bring down you know the economy mm. or the, you know the uh, power grids or you know the same fears as everybody else so you think that threat is real oh for sure mm. there's no doubt that you know and that the U.S. is part of it, and the Chinese are part yeah, of it, and yeah. you know the Iranians Political. and the Israelis. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, they're all up to it, mm -hmm. and you know, obviously, it's it's just another form of warfare. What's next for you? Well, we got a lot going on. We're doing a TV show called Berlin Station with uh, Paramount and Epix. That's basically uh, set in 2015 in Berlin, Germany, in the uh, U.S. Embassy on the CIA floor. So it's kind of like Tinker Tailor meets The Wire about you know the CIA operatives there. Nice. So we start that in November, and then we're doing a, I'm not personally producing it, but we're doing a movie, Collateral Beauty, mm -hmm. with um, Alfonso Gomez Rejo and uh, Will Smith, that's being financed by New Line. So that starts in November also. Well, I'm excited to uh, watch your company flourish and, and watch more of your great movies and TV shows. Yeah, so great. thank you so much. Thank it was very you. nice to meet you. Thanks. All the best. Take care.